Hi, this is T. Payton. So I had a colleague ask me about using roles for indicating areas on the timeline and marking things, even kind of marking to-dos. And I wanted to show you a little bit about that workflow and how I have used it. So, um, hey, first of all, I want to show you that I'm using footage from Inside the Edit, which is uh, an excellent course. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, you sign up for this thing, you have uh, classes uh, that you can watch, uh, or chapters rather. This thing takes, you can spend easily a year um, doing this project and you get a whole lot of footage with it. So anyway, just a little plug for inside the edit. Um, so let me show you uh, a couple things, a couple scenarios that, that might be um, helpful. First of all, um, when you think about, once we have clips on the timeline, we don't have a lot of ways of marking them. Now, one of the things we could do is we can rename uh, clips. So I could select these two clips right here and I could just rename them. We could just call it um, best, okay? And now I've renamed it and then you could say filter by best, but that, that isn't maybe the best thing to do because we've ruined uh, the name that is there. But that's one thing you can do to mark it. A lot, a lot of times I'll be um, grabbing some, just a minute here. A lot of times I'll be uh, stacking things, uh, especially compositing. And I want to, I want to name these things properly and say like, oh, okay, this is my, uh, you know, I don't know. This is my hold mat. And this is my key, for example. And then down here, this will be my plate, whatever. Anyway, and that's really helpful to be able to organize um, in that way. But that's that's one way to mark something. Um, now, one thing I can't do is I can't mark favorites once I'm down here on the timeline. Favorites are already marked. Actually, favorites don't carry down um, to here. We only get keywords. Now, keywords are cool, but you can't add them once they're on the timeline. They're just kind of there. Um, you might not know that you can actually bring notes down from each keyword um, to the timeline. And if you look at my subclip love, I talk about this a whole lot more. Um, but let's see, some other ways to mark some items on the timeline. Obviously, there are markers. Uh, option M is the best way to do this. You can make your marker, and then you can use the tab key to switch between. Now, lots of times, I don't use chapter markers for export. I just want them for indications of areas. And I really like the way the markers uh, look. It's a nice different color. And then also you can just organize by chapter here and say, oh, I'm gonna have, you know, this is another chapter and this is another chapter here. And you can, oops, didn't get that quite right. Um, too fast. And you can navigate to chapters, which is really kind of cool. But as far as like marking a whole bunch of markers, one thing, you'll, I mean, a whole bunch of clips, You'll notice once we even have a marker on there, we can't actually select the clip. It just navigates to that marker. So now one way we could actually mark clips is with roles. So the way that can work easily, let's say for example, we needed to do a bunch of effect shots, okay? So what if we marked these and we wanted to somehow indicate, hey, we need effect shots for these. Well, let's use that for roles. So let's go up here, we have some, uh, let's go ahead and make it a video sub role and the way to do that is go up here to edit roles add a video sub role and let's say needs um, vfx okay let's make another one that's called vfx added okay so now with these clips selected i can say hey these need vfx and you know what these do too now you'll notice you don't actually see anything different and that's because the highlighting for each role isn't turned on. If you go here to roles, and let's say, let's highlight the need, need VFX. Now we've got this little highlight area. So as you can see, let's see, let's make these need VFX. Great. And you can kind of see what's happening now. Now we've got some highlights and it's like, oh, look at that. Um, now I can get a better indication. Now, what if you wanted to select those things? Well, if you go over here to clips, um, you'll notice that roles is one of the columns. It actually doesn't actually have to show there. You could hide roles and you could still search for it. So I can search for need V 
FX, and it highlights those things. In fact, look, I can select all these guys here. I can Command-2, and I can actually get to them. So let's um, turn back roles so it's a little easier to see what's happening. So let's get our need VFX. Okay, now I've got all our nice need VFX. And let's say for some ex bizarre example, I wanted that in a timeline. Um, maybe a better example of this, let's go to a different name, different role. And let's, let's make a new sub role. I want to encourage you to use sub roles. It's a good idea just to leave your main roles just where they are um, and just deal with sub roles in case you have to export that. Let's just call this um, for trailer, okay? And now what we can do is we can go through and say, oh, this is a great clip right here, and this one's good. Maybe not that. That one, oh, like that orange. And I like this one and this one. Okay, so you've selected those. Now go ahead and change it to say for trailer. Now one thing about this, you can only have one role assigned to a video clip at a time. So if you have something else, it's gonna erase it. Let's go ahead and now highlight our for trailer. Great. And let's say you are going through your edit and as you're editing this down, you're realizing, oh wow, there's a native, that shirt. I love that shirt, love it. I want to put that in the trailer as well. Let me turn off skimming there. And then as you're going about your edit and tweaking things, and you might realize, eh, that isn't that good. I'm going to kill that for the trailer and just get it back to regular video. Okay, so then let's go ahead and select these four trailers. And again, this just highlights it here. Um, if we want to, now we can say trailer. Oops the filter and now I just have the filter clips so let's select these command 2 to switch to the timeline and now they're selected so now let's copy those let's make a new project here I'm just gonna put this in my junk so we'll just call this the uh, trailer draft now I've got that and I can paste those things and they're like oh look they're all like out it's okay search for gap Grab your gaps, command to delete. And look, you have everything you need, which is quite cool. Um, good way to select just a few items. And look, what's kind of cool about this is they still have the roll that's there. Let me show you one other use for roll that I use. We use quite a bit. Um, and that is has to do with audio. So let me go ahead and not select this. Now, oftentimes we'll be working with several channels of audio. So let me just show you what, let's just kind of uh, fake this. So let me open this one clip in the timeline. And let me just go ahead and dupe this audio here. And, and I don't really know about, about the way it works, just, just dupe it. Now let's say this one here was our camera audio. So let's go ahead and get some different sub roles for this. So here is our dialogue. We're just going to call this camera audio. Another one we're going to call this lav. Okay. Now, granted, I have a whole bunch of things already there, but um, let's just use this. So this is going to be camera audio, and this one down here is going to be lav. Okay. So now that these are assigned, now you wouldn't really do this in a complex clip like I did. You do this in multicam, um, more than likely. But now I can go here and I can say, hey, where is my camera audio? Well, there's my camera audio, where's my love? Okay, there's my love. And you might want to realize, oh wait, can I get in there and edit this? Again, this is better for kind of uh, uh, multi-cam. But if I turn off, oh, I can't do this because it's multi-cam. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna take my word for it. Well, okay, here let me just let me find this clip. Let me do this right. New multicam clip. Um, I'll put this in my junk. Okay, now I've got this multicam clip. So now let's get some audio off this thing. Let's see. Let's make a new angle 
and let's see. Um, let's just get the audio from that. Okay, there we go. Now this is going to make more sense. So let's call this the uh, camera. Oh no, sorry. Let's call this. Um, what are we doing? Lav. That's right. Oh look, and it's just tiny. I didn't get actually the right part there. Okay, we just need that little tiny bit. It's there. Um, oh, I saw what I did. I had a range selected, and I made that multi-cam clip. I should have known better than that. Um, wow, where is this thing? You know what? Let's just go ahead and sync this. Sorry, I just made a. I was like, what am I doing? Sync selection and then view. Okay, there we go. I just saw that that was going to be problematic. So I might as well fix that. Um, I did P, by the way, to, to get that. Okay, now these at least are synced. Okay, so you've got your lav. Now let's say that you're, um, let's make sure this is marked lav, dialog, lav. So you not only need to change the channel, but you need to actually um, assign or not the channel, rather, the angle, you need to actually assign the role. So here, let's make sure that this one is on camera. Okay, and now this will make a little more sense. So let's go to our junk and our test multi-cam multi clip here, and now let's get this little bit of snippet. And let's put that in right there. Oops, I've got our audio angle. Audio only still turned on. Okay, now, so here's here's a better scenario. Let's just go ahead and sprinkle this about. Let's see, let's grab a couple seconds of that. You grab a couple seconds of that, and uh, grab a couple seconds of that. Okay, great. So now what we can do is we can see really easily. Hey, where's our camera? Oh, that's our camera audio. How much is using lav? Whoa. So now you've got this scenario where you want to make sure, I don't want to be using my camera audio. That's going to be awful. I want to make sure I can actually select multiple roles that way, highlight. I want to make sure I'm using my lav instead. So then you would um, flip through here and I've got these selected of all my camera. I can in fact hit command two, sorry, go back here, go to my camera. So here's my camera audio that's there. Oh, not that first one, sorry. Um, command two, those are selected. And now I can change my assignment and say, you know what? I want instead for my lav to be selected, not the camera audio. As you can see right here, it says lav. So, um, so now I can go back to my roles and I can see a much cleaner Thing. It's like, oh great, how much camera audio? Oh, I still have one camera audio. You know, I need to deal with this situation because I've, I've got that. So we use that and then also further in production, um, we often use multicam clips. This is something we'll also do too, is we will have, we'll process this through say RX4. So we'll actually make a new, well, kind of depends how we'll do it, but we might add another angle bring down another channel of this and then let's say okay we're gonna we're gonna mess with this to some extent let's go ahead and put a gain on here um, or actually let's just turn on the built-in compressor just make that really uniform okay it's a pretty nasty compression but um, at least we can see the difference between these two and now we might call this lav Rx fix or something like that. And then we'll give it the role of say dialog and we'll call it lav rx fix or sweetened or rather. Okay, great. So that's that's all assigned there. And now let's if we go back, we can Start looking and saying, okay, wait, what have we what have we fixed here as far as Rx? Or maybe what we need to do is find our lobs. Okay, there's our lobs again. And search for lob. 
get our lofts, command two, go back here to audio, and now we're going to turn on our RX to make sure we have RX going. So now we're going to go rolls, and then oh, it totally didn't do it. Okay, there's my RX. Oh, that's weird. Why is the RX not showing there? Interesting. Let's double check this roll. Ah, it's still on love. So now it's on love RX. Okay, so it's just that one angle that's on love RX. Okay, now I've got my RX sweetened and I can see. Okay, what do I have love that's unsweetened? Ooh, I still have this one. So I need to deal with that or, or whatever. And this lets you um, quickly highlight some also like things to do. It's like, oh, I need to go back here to lob and continue to fix this thing. And let's say I got it fixed, and then I would change the role and say, okay, this is now um, law of RX sweetened. And now it's like my little to-do is kind of done. So anyway, roles can help you uh, not just with export, but organize some parts of your edit and things that are you doing with your edit, and also um, identify clips that you might want to use for something else. Anyway, enjoy.